Hi, my name's Scott the Miniature Maniac, and today we're going to re-explore the Citadel Contrast range and see if it can help me batch paint faster. What up, Mini Family? I'm not the biggest fan of batch painting. Typically halfway through, I start to question my life's purpose. But suffice to say that I could probably learn a thing or two about batch painting. Maybe I could fast track that learning by using some of GW's contrast paints. I'm not sure, but let's give it a try. This video isn't going to be so much about how I painted this specific unit of dudes from Mantic's Kings of War, but more about how I approached batch painting them. A little while ago, I made a video about trying to paint a single Space Marine in under 30 minutes. While I wasn't successful in that endeavor, I did learn a bit about cutting corners for the sake of speed. I plan to implement some of that learning on these guys today. Model prep went as usual for these guys. These minis come with a lot of extra bits, but for the sake of speed, I didn't include a lot of them on my minis. The more burdened your models are with detail, the longer they take to paint. There's a time and place for a lot of cool details, but for rank and file troops like this, it probably isn't worth it. Since these models won't go on their own individual bases, which you saw in last week's video, I need some temporary handles for them. I attach the models to a block of wood with a pin and one foot super glued in. I'm not gluing in the pin at this stage. This allows me later to use the pin when I install them into the cool display base and I can break the super glue bond pretty easily when the painting is done. Step one of the painting process is a nice layer of black primer. After that, I apply my first base coat of navy blue. These guys are obviously wintry, so I started with a cold undercoat, which will help me keep everything nice and chilly looking. Just like the Space Marines in my 30 minute trials, my next step is to apply a zenithal highlight with my airbrush with white ink. If I don't get full opacity with this step, what I end up with is an off-white that's cold because I'm applying it over a navy blue and my ink is a little translucent. This works out pretty great and it's also pretty fast. You know it was also pretty great? The sponsor for this video, Frontier Wargaming. Frontier Wargaming makes a paint case. No, literally, it's called the paint case. The guy sent me a case a while back and I used it on my most recent trip to Adepticon and it worked out great. The case is made from a stained Baltic birch plywood and the pieces are cut out with a laser CNC for razor sharp precision. The case features three paint racks that can hold up to 96 Vallejo or 54 Citadel paint pots. Of course, Citadel is less because those paint pots are thick. Five bits and supply boxes, one box for your brushes and tools, a tray with six miniature holders, an adjustable shoulder strap, and an optional add-on LED light. If you want to pick up one for yourself or for a loved one this holiday season, you can find a link in the video description below. Also, if you use the coupon code MINIAC at checkout, you get an additional 10 bucks off. Thanks for sponsoring this episode, Frontier Wargaming. Now back to my frosty peeps. After I've applied the ink with my airbrush, the next step is to do some contrast paints. But before I do that, I want to apply a layer of gloss varnish. This will protect the white ink from getting lifted by the contrast paint, but it also makes the contrast paint operate better. Now that my varnish is complete, I can start applying contrast paint. The boots, fur, boots and fur. Boots with the fur, with the fur. Bone and other small details got a layer of various contrast paints. Because everything is going over this zenithly undercoated surface, it'll have more contrast information than if it were just a normal base coat. Additionally, because that undercoat was a cold tone, everything will end up being influenced by that. For instance, the yellow sepia color I used for all of the bone ended up being a slight green color because yellow and blue makes green. Most of these parts of the minis won't get any extra love. A zenithal undercoat and a layer of contrast paint will be where I stop. Next up, I'm going to undercoat various small and metallic details with a very dark blue. I also did this with the Space Marine models in that earlier video. The mini had black leather details and metallic parts, so I base coated all of those elements black and then applied a layer of silver paint to the metallics, making sure to preserve the deepest details with black. Or in this case, dark blue. My theory here is that washing is actually a waste of time, which I know sounds ridiculous at first, but let me explain. When I apply wash, typically it goes something like this. Base coat apply a wash, apply another layer of paint to reapply highlights, and also clean up the wash. What if instead I just base coated with a darker color and then applied a layer with a brighter color, just like I normally would? 
This allows me to skip the wash step and also allows me to get significantly darker recess shading than something like a dark blue wash or a black wash might get. On paper, it sounds great. I'll do that for the hair, the skin tone, and the metallics. Okay, I got a bunch of lesser important details with contrast paint applied and some dark base coat slapped on. I applied some dark blue wash to the light blue fabric to bring more definition to the cloth, and now it's time to apply some selective highlights. To the bone, I applied an off-white warm tone that I mixed a little blue into to bring it closer to the color of the bone right now. Otherwise, it was a little too bright white. To the fur, I applied a purple-ish off-white, and to the metallics, I applied a pure silver highlight. Coming to the head, I gave the hair and face a little bit more effort. With the red hair, I applied some orange highlights and then more highlights with some warm off-white colors mixed in. I hesitate to call these people redheads because the last time I claimed to be painting a redhead, I was apparently painting a blonde and the comment section pooped on me. <laughs> on the face, I applied one layer of brighter skin tone to the areas like the cheeks, the forehead, and the chin. After applying some basic highlights, it was then on to special effects. These are really easy to accomplish steps that really elevate the paint job improportionately compared to how much time they take. First, some blood for the blood gut on the weapons. This is always a really easy addition and helps give the model more color variety. Lastly, some snow. This snow product that I'm applying is a mixture of Golden's Light Molding Paste, Interference Blue Pigment from Pearl X, and some Soft Snow Flake from Woodland Scenics. With all three mixed together, you get a nicely varied, sparkly snow. I applied it to the tops of the heads and the furs around the shoulders, as that's where I'd assume it would collect most. With that, the models were complete, and I could attach them to the scenic base I made in last week's video. Time for some review. I don't batch paint a lot of models, so I'm not an authority on the subject. To be honest, I was kind of hating the process three quarters of the way through and I wanted to quit, but I got vids to make and figs to paint so I couldn't just throw in the towel. I don't feel like the steps I took made the process fast. To paint these 15 dudes, I probably spent between 25 and 30 hours, which seems like a long time for batch painting. I'd love to hear your guys' tips and tricks when it comes to batch painting and we can all learn together. It's been a while since I've done it and I'm pretty clearly rusty. I did enjoy the inclusion of GW's contrast paints and will likely continue to use them for details that aren't necessarily the most important. What do you guys think about the usage of contrast paints as it relates to batch painting? YouTube, what are you doing in here, you sneaky little painter? Well, now that I have your attention, let me tease a release coming out on Black Friday that has a preference for humanity's life force. That's all I can say for right now. Tune back into my channel on Black Friday to get the whole answer. I'm really excited about it and I can't wait to show you. All right, back to the video. That's gonna do it for this video, guys. If you enjoy the topic of speed painting individual models, I have a few videos on that topic linked in the top right-hand corner of the screen. If you like the channel and you want to support it, there are a few ways to do that, namely a Patreon campaign with a bunch of fun rewards like a Discord server where you and I can hang out any day of the week and talk about your miniature painting projects or, I don't know, your favorite uh, bath scent. Yes, favorite bath scents. You can also buy things like merch like this sick sweater or a hat or t-shirts and also shop on Amazon with my affiliate link. Subscribe or die! And most importantly, don't forget to... <laughs> Paint more what? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs>